A major oil spill has struck the surfer's paradise of Huntington Beach in California. Here are the details. Reuters reports that a leak in an oil pipeline dumped more than a half a million liters of crude oil on the famous beaches of Huntington Beach in California. Disaster reaction units kicked into gear early Saturday, October 2nd, when boaters reported seeing an oily sheen on the water. The oil spill was caused by a suspected leak in an underwater pipeline that takes oil from an oil production facility to shore. The leaking pipeline is 28 kilometers long and runs 24 to 30 meters under the surface of the ocean. It connects to an oil production platform named Ellie, which in turn is connected by a walkway to a drilling platform named Ellen. The facility began operating in 1980 in an area called the Beta Field. Oil pulled from beneath the ocean and processed by Ellie is taken by the pipeline to Long Beach. Authorities say beaches will remain closed for weeks and maybe even months. All of Huntington Beach was closed, and the spill covered beaches from the Huntington Beach Pier down to Newport Beach, a stretch of beachfront that's popular with surfers and sunbathers. Miyoko Sakashita, director of the Center for Biological Diversity's Oceans Program, told the Associated Press that the oil spill just shows how dirty and dangerous oil drilling is, and oil that gets into the water. It's impossible to clean it up, so it ends up washing up on our beaches. Last month's oil spill in Mauritius could end up ruining one of the last great hotspots of marine biodiversity left on Earth. Now, an investigation suggests it happened because someone on the ship wanted to get within cell phone range of the island for a birthday celebration, among other damning details. Here's what we know so far: the Panama Maritime Authority has officially joined the investigation of the final voyage of the MV Wakashio. The Wakashio ran aground on a coral reef in July and broke apart in mid-August, spilling 1,000 tons of oil. It was the worst environmental disaster in the history of Mauritius. Mauritius is a small and poor island state in the Indian Ocean. It depends on fish, corals, and marine wildlife for food and tourism for its economy. The accident happened at Point Desney, a coral reef that lies near a marine park and is listed under the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands of International Importance. The Wakashio entered the Indian Ocean on July 16th. The Panamanian flagged Japanese-owned bulk carrier adjusted course on July 21st. The ship then entered Mauritius's exclusive economic zone on July 23rd. On July 25th, it changed course again and collided with the reef off the coast of Mauritius at 7:15 p.m. The Panama Maritime Authority confirmed revelations first reported by local newspaper El Express. The Wakashio made a course change to get within five miles of Mauritius to pick up a cell phone signal for a crew member's birthday celebration. The investigation also found that the chart displayed on the Wakashio's electronic chart display and information system was the wrong chart and the wrong scale. This made it impossible to properly verify the approach of the coast and shallower waters. Mauritian waters are home to 1,700 species, according to the UN Convention on Biological Diversity. Speaking to the BBC, Karina Chokan, a senior lecturer in marine biology at the University of Brighton, said there are very few such marine areas with such rich biodiversity left on the planet. An oil spill like this will impact almost everything there. Sunil Kumar Nandeshwar, the captain of the Japanese ship, was arrested last month and charged with unlawful interference with the operation of a property of a ship that resulted in unsafe navigation. The 58-year-old Indian national faces 60 years in jail if found guilty. Sri Lanka's beautiful beaches are being swamped by billions of plastic pellets and toxins as the country deals with a massive and growing environmental disaster. The disaster started when a fire erupted on a container ship after it anchored near the port of Colombo. The ship's owners have been aware of an acid leak on the ship for weeks, but say they could not fix the problem because Qatar and India would not allow the ship to dock there. Here are the details. The BBC reports that Sri Lanka is dealing with a growing environmental disaster as billions of plastic pellets, oil, and dangerous chemicals from a sinking ship smother its coastline. The container ship Express Pearl left the Indian port of Hazira on May 15th. Heading for Colombo, the ship had earlier sprung a leak of highly corrosive nitric acid, but its owners claimed they had been denied permission by both Qatar and India to dock the ship. While it was anchored off Sri Lanka's Colombo harbor, a fire broke out on May 20th. Sri Lankan officials believe the fire was caused by the leaking acid. The ship then burned out of control for two weeks before settling in the shallow waters of the harbor. In that time, hundreds of shipping containers fell into the sea, releasing toxins and billions of plastic pellets into the ocean. The plastic Plastic pellets have already covered miles of Sri Lanka's famously beautiful beaches. Experts say the pellets still in the sea could travel as far as India, Indonesia, and Somalia. 
Local fishermen were told to stay out of the ocean, but the fishermen say they need to fish to survive and will need to be compensated by the government. Sri Lanka has launched a criminal investigation into the disaster and says it will seek compensation. An oil spill in the seas near Mauritius is so large that it can be seen from space. Here is what we know so far. Reuters reports Mauritius has declared a state of emergency after a stricken tanker began spilling tons of fuel, causing an ecological disaster among the reefs to the southeast of the island nation. The Panamanian-flagged bulk carrier Wakashio is owned by Japan-based Okio Marine, an affiliate of Nagashiki Shipping. According to the Washington Post, the ship struck the reefs on July 25th and has leaked more than 1,000 tons of oil. India-based news site The Saddle reports that the 300-meter-long Wakashio carried 3,800 tons of bunker fuel, 200 tons of diesel, and 90 tons of lubricants. According to Al Jazeera, Mauritius fears the ship could break up completely and release all its cargo. Al Jazeera reports oil sludge could be seen seeping into the ocean and white sand beaches, which threatens the fish, coral, and marine wildlife that Mauritius depends on for its economy. Once again, 2020 hits the ball right out of the park. Perhaps now is a good time to brush up these woodsy skills you have always fantasized about. Supposing, of course, that there will be a wilderness for us to run to at the end of all of this. The Ocean Cleanup, the Dutch nonprofit organization developing technologies to rid the world's oceans of plastic, is wrapping up production of its Interceptor, an autonomous system that removes plastic waste from rivers before it is able to reach the ocean. The Ocean Cleanup currently has three interceptors operating in Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Dominican Republic, with a fourth due to launch in Vietnam early next year. On Thursday, December 10th, the organization announced a partnership with Cone Cranes, a Finnish company that produces lifting equipment. Cone Cranes will handle manufacturing, installation, and maintenance of the interceptor with local partners. The company is already building two interceptors at its MHE DMAG facility in Klang, Malaysia. The interceptor is powered by solar energy and uses lithium-ion batteries, which theoretically enables it to operate 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The vessel is anchored to the riverbed and uses a floating barrier that guides plastic waste from the river into the system's conveyor belt. Once plastic waste is on board, it is automatically put into one of six dumpsters on a barge inside the system. The system alerts local operators once all six dumpsters on board are full. Local operators then send over a vessel to collect the plastic waste. The barge is taken back to shore with the plastic waste and emptied for recycling. The barge is then reattached to the interceptor to collect more plastic debris. Ocean Cleanup states on its website that the interceptor is capable of extracting 50,000 kilograms of trash a day. The organization claims that under optimal conditions, that number could increase to 100,000 kilograms of waste per day. Ocean Cleanup has ambitious plans of tackling 1,000 of the world's most polluting rivers by 2025. The organization says it has established that these waterways, which comprise 1% of the world's rivers, are responsible for 80% of plastic waste present in oceans. In October, the organization announced that it would sell sunglasses made from plastic it has recycled from the Great Pacific Garbage Patch to help fund its operators. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.